Today I'm going to disassemble the Nerf Phoenix 2.0. Stick around to the end to learn one quick way to make this blaster better. I picked this one up from Target.com for about $12 with the intention of disassembling it for a project that utilizes machine learning and servos. If that sounds like something you could be interested in, maybe think about subscribing. Thanks to a review by Coop772, I learned that this blaster is actually glued shut. And so as a disclaimer, I was unable to open this blaster without damaging it. The top chamber cover can be removed by pulling it up and over. This process can be made a little bit easier if you take out the magazine first, but it's not necessary. We're going to start by removing the seven screws on the left side. When disassembling things, it can be useful to use a methodology to keep straight where all the parts go. I use the clockwise method from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, where you take everything out in the same orientation, and I place them in the magnetic parts tray. You could also use a piece of cardboard with holes punched in it. The locations of the seven screws are as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The two glued in pillars that gave me the most trouble were in the top front. Sometimes the screws may be hard to remove fully from the holes. Either use a little bit of percussive maintenance or just leave them for now and don't worry about it. Now grab a small sharp pry tool and pry off the hand grip cover. It's fairly flexible, you just work your way underneath it and it should eventually pop off. Don't forget to remove the front cover that houses the batteries and remove those if you had installed them previously. It takes four AA batteries, the orientation of which can be found on the central fin in the battery housing area. So as I started trying to work my way into this, I discovered almost immediately that I'd need to try to break up the glue. I grabbed some 91% isopropyl alcohol and a couple of cotton swabs with the intention of going around the perimeter of the gun and, and breaking up any glue that they had there. I think this isn't really necessary and I'm not totally sure about the efficacy of it. I tested it later on a real heavy glue spot on the inside and it didn't really appear to do anything. It may have just added a little bit of lubrication to help the tool slide in a little easier. If you don't already have the materials for this, you could probably skip this step. Ah, uh, the sweet crack of breaking your first tiny little clip. They're these little plastic clips that go around the whole perimeter of the inside of the gun. They're pretty easy to break, so just be as careful as you can. This part will take a while, so make sure to rest if you need to. As you work your way around the blaster, you'll feel the snaps start to give way slowly. It's right about now that the Phoenix draws first blood. Take extra caution when working around the magazine portion of this blaster, as after the plastic has been separated, it's extremely sharp in some spots. After a solid half an hour of working my way around the gun, I began to get impatient. I decided that bigger tools were necessary. In comes the flathead. Using several screwdrivers, I held gaps open and worked my way up through the sizes. Really, I think the 2.0 in this naming convention stands for how many times it'll draw blood before you can actually get it open. Ideally, try to be more careful than I am here and be extremely wary of where you're applying pressure and if you slipped, what that could hit. 
As you can see, there's that glued pillar I was talking about. No way to access it from the outside. You could maybe drill through it, but your best bet is just to apply a bunch of torque like that and eventually break them free. Here I tested to see if a larger portion of the glue would be dissolved by the isopropyl, and it didn't really appear to be. To remove the main pushrod for the trigger assembly, pull up directly towards you and make sure to catch the return spring. There is a little bit of grease inside, so maybe have something handy to wipe your hands off. Here I point out a number of glued pillars around the inside of the blaster. You'll have to make sure these are broken free or else it will not open. The rev trigger and trigger assembly can be removed easily by pulling directly upward. Don't forget to keep a tidy workspace. There's a screwed in piece which is the safety so you can't rev the blaster without a magazine in it. You don't really need this piece inside there and so I just remove it. As you squeeze the trigger it pushes the plunger forward and throws a dart into two spinning wheels. Congratulations, you've now successfully disassembled the Nerf Phoenix 2.0. The quick trick. Taking a small flathead screwdriver, pry back and forth on the short ends of the magazine. If you do this carefully, you should be able to get it off without damaging the magazine itself. It's completely useless and a waste of plastic. The magazine looks better and will be a little bit lighter without it. If you have any tips or tricks for how to get this blaster open, leave a comment down below and maybe somebody else can learn from your wisdom. If you appreciated this video, consider giving it a like. The Nerf Phoenix 2.0